What's up everybody, I'm back. Welcome to the show. Have a seat because this could end up being a long video because I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Let's do it. So my man Matt Walker hit me up on Facebook and asked me if I had tried um, the Xbox xCloud stuff, right? Because he knows I, you know, indulged in the Stadia. I told him I hadn't tried it yet because I don't own any consoles or anything like that. So I'm not like in the Xbox ecosystem. And Stadia seemed to be something that was more geared for a guy like me who, you know, just doesn't want a whole bunch of hardware and wants a lot of flexibility and stuff. He ends up telling me that, you know, xCloud, he's starting to feel like it's a little bit better. They both have work to do. They're both in beta stages, but xCloud is a little bit better because you get a lot of games and yada, yada, yada. So I download it, I get invited to the program, and here we are doing this video. So I had to go to Best Buy and literally purchase an Xbox wireless controller because once I fired up the app, it prompted me to connect an Xbox wireless controller. I was thinking, well, damn, now I gotta go spend some more money. These things are like 60 bucks regular price. Ended up price matching it with Amazon. The link is in the description. It was 39 bucks, so I got it for that. So I have this new controller sitting here, and I made it. And it made me think like, man, I got four controllers now. First, I bought the G-Lap a couple of months ago so I could play my mobile games. Prior to that, I had the Steel Series remote that I've had for like, I don't know, two or three years just so I could play mobile games with it and stuff. And of course, the Stadia. So let me talk about some stuff with mobile gaming first because that's what this is kind of all about. I'm really excited that Google, uh, Microsoft with Xbox and Sony with PlayStation have stepped into the mobile gaming arena because honestly, I like to game on my phone. That's why I bought the G-Lap that but the number one thing I hate about mobile games is the ads, uh, the commercials and all the extra purchases they want you to do just to get to certain levels or drive faster or get another gun. That is my number one gripe about mobile gaming. I can't stand it. Honestly, I would rather pay 40 to 60 bucks for a game and just play all the way through. I don't understand why app developers don't do that. I guess they figured out the cash grab and so here we are with that. So as far as mobile gaming, that's where I stand. I like it, but my big gripe is all the freaking ads, man. But I did get this for my uh, Galaxy Note 10 because I like to game on my phone playing racing games and stuff like that. But then when I heard about Stadia, I was like, yes, this is it. I'll be able to play these games on my phone, like real games on my phone. Uh, eventually, because right now, Google Stadia does not have that feature. They only opened up the mobile phone, uh, mobile device gaming to uh, to Google devices, such as the Pixel and stuff like that. It's coming soon. So when I get to the comparison of uh, xCloud and the Google Stadia, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in depth because we're not really comparing apples to apples here. I wanna talk about this mobile gaming stuff some more though. So with the Still Series remote, it works well for mobile gaming for the most part. I did use it on a tablet a couple years ago. Now I actually just use this as a uh, peripheral device for my uh, Ronin SE. So I really don't use this anymore. But just to clean up my area a little bit, I'm gonna eliminate these two after I tell you that this does not work with Stadia or xCloud. I've tried it. Now the Steel Series remote will connect to the xCloud platform. However, you will get some really, really buggy performance. Like it is not made for anything else but an Xbox controller. I was trying to, I don't know what I was doing. I was like, I hit A and it started shooting. It like it confused the trigger and then the trigger got hung up and I, you know, I started it over and everything. But yeah, this does not work with uh, Google Stadia or xCloud. So let's just eliminate these two because their relevancy in this conversation just ended. Now let's get to the stars of the show, Google Stadia and Microsoft xCloud. So here is where we stand right now. As of right now, both of these are kind of in an invite only kind of stage. Whereas Google Stadia, uh, this is the founder's edition. That's why the controller is blue. And I also signed up for the, um, the pre-access or whatever you want to call it for xCloud, okay? Currently, as long as you have a Chromecast Ultra hooked up, you can play on any TV, like a regular TV, just hook up that Chromecast Ultra to it, you can play. You can play on any PC and you can just move about as you want to. And you can play on any Google device such as a tablet or a Pixel phone. Now, here's a big thing. Not everybody has a Pixel phone. As a matter of fact, I don't know anyone who has a Pixel phone personally. I think it's only like tech people that own Pixel phones. <laughs> but all the people I know, they just have an iPhone or a Samsung phone. So that's kind of garbage right now. But it's supposed to open up in the future in 2020 to pretty much most mobile phones. That way this thing is fully compatible and universal throughout any screen you got. As far as xCloud, 
uh, we are only able to play this on mobile devices such as a tablet or a mobile phone. And you got to put this little clip on there and, you know, you can just kind of use it like such. I do have a clip on order. It's supposed to come tomorrow, but I figured I'd go ahead and shoot this video today. As far as my experimentation goes, you cannot play uh, xCloud on a TV screen. Um, you can't even play it on a PC. It seems to me that xCloud was only made for mobile devices and that's it. Since this is coming from Microsoft and Xbox, uh, they already have a console for a TV experience. It's not as cool as being able to jump from TV to TV as the Stadia, but they do have a console experience. So as far as streaming, xCloud is mobile device only, such as a tablet, or a phone. So I definitely got to give Google props for that because it's more universal even as it stands right now. If you got a Pixel phone, you are truly good to go. If not, you got to just wait to early 2020 and then you'll be able to play on pretty much any screen. Whereas xCloud, you're limited to just a mobile device, whether it be a tablet or a phone. And it doesn't have to be any specific type of tablet or phone. As far as I know, it's just any tablet or phone. As far as the app experience goes, let me go ahead and fire up my tablet. Let's go ahead and open up the app here for the xCloud. Get it fired up, bring you in a little bit closer so you can see. All right, let's see if we can get this in landscape. There we go. All right, so I was just playing around with Soul Calibur and Gears of War, and I also played, um, what was it? I opened up Borderland. Let me see. Um, yeah, let's just get into this Gears of War. By the way, a huge difference right now is that Google Stadia only launched for like 20 to 22 games. And so far, I'm pleased with it, man. I've been playing the crap out of Tomb Raider and Mortal Kombat and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm pleased with it right now because like I can only play one game at a time, really. I, I know a lot of people say it's only 20 games. Like I'm like, OK, whatever. But there's more coming, plenty more coming. And it's from like all platforms. It's going to be games that you'll see on Xbox and games that you'll see on PlayStation like Red Dead Redemption 2. But on xCloud, they launched it with 50 games for the preview. And I think that's pretty cool. And you don't even have to pay for these, man. I was very surprised. And that's actually what made me want to try this was because all I had to buy was a controller and I could immediately start playing all these games. I haven't paid for none of this crap, man. So <laughs> let's go ahead and open up Gears of War. It says, okay, you got to connect a supported controller via Bluetooth or USB. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy fired up. All right, so it says Xbox wireless controller while it does its magic let's go ahead and go back to the uh, xcloud screen so let's go back into gears of war and it should just allow you in there now so it says game streaming preview let's see if we can just get into a little bit of gameplay because the gameplay in here is really nice it's very you know it's kind of console-ish now the the video quality is not as good as you know it's only going to be as good as the screen you're playing it on which is going to be like you know your galaxy tablet or your pixel tablet whatever they're making these days it's only gonna but okay you can see how long this is taking this is taking a while it says setting up your stream and i have one gigabit internet so it's taking quite a while but that takes me to another place where i need to talk about like the some more versatility stuff so this you can play on a 4g connection or wi-fi so if you're at a park or something and you want to play some games real quick you can actually play this if you've got some clean 4g now i did play this with my phone a little bit on the 4g network in my house and the 4G in my house is actually pretty good. And I did get some, man, I, I, I did not get a solid performance, man. It was a lot of stuttering and a lot of glitching and stuff like that. So I don't know if the 4G is quite ready just yet. As far as uh, the streaming quality on Wi-Fi, this is actually really good. I actually put it right up there with Stadia. They're pretty much neck and neck inside of my house with my Wi-Fi. Uh, there are some screen tears and there's some glitching and some freezing, but it's not so bad that I want to quit the game or I'm mad and I want to throw the controller on either one of these. I can't say either one of these performs better on Wi-Fi. But as you can see, I'm still trying to connect to this game. Now, I do know for a fact, if I was playing Stadia, I'd be connected and playing already. There's something going on here where it's like trying to contact the servers. You see the little little antenna right there. This is thinking slow, man. I'm ready to shoot up some stuff. Let's go. So everything's connected. The control is connected to the screen. Let's go into campaign, single player, continue my campaign. Now, I really do suck at this game. I've never played this game before up until uh, late last night for about 10 minutes. I just got through a tutorial and that was about it. Man, this takes a long time. I wonder, if, does it take this long on a console? Somebody let me know in the comments because I've never played the console version of this either. One eternity later. 
Okay, that was pretty insane. I, I had to cut the video because it was just taking so long to connect to the servers. I don't know if it was my internet or the cloud service as a whole, not talking to each other very well, but now we're playing. As you can see here, now the quality of the game, the picture quality of the game is only going to be as good as what you got here. They're not touting like 4K or 1080p or nothing like that. I don't know what the specs are as far as the streaming resolution. I don't know what they're boasting, but I didn't see anything about promising 4K or 1080p or anything like that. But as you can see on um, on Wi-Fi, the streaming quality is actually really good. I haven't had any hiccups just yet. No freezing. As you can see, I suck terribly. Like, look, if you want to like team up with me or something, I'm letting you know you're making a bad decision. You're going to lose. You're going to get shot at a lot because I suck. I'm, I'm weak. Look at this. I can't even aim. <laughs> Anyways, man, I just wanted to show you all some gameplay and how smooth it is. It's a very, very smooth experience, but I've had the same smooth experience on Google Stadia as far as uh, the Wi-Fi connectivity. Where this has the edge is that as at launch, they allow you to play on mobile devices such as phones over 4G, which is super nice if you got one of those little clips. I'm really not sure if Google's gonna be doing that in early 2020 or not, who knows? But to be quite honest with you, I don't think it's ever gonna work that well because shoot, when I'm watching YouTube videos over 4G, it always bumps it down to like 480 so I can play without any buffering. As soon as I put it up to like 720 or 1080p, it starts buffering and pausing and stuff like that. So I wouldn't expect too much out of the 4G. Maybe some people out there have had a good experience on 4G, but I don't think it's ever going to be that good. Stick to Wi-Fi if you want to get one of the best experiences out of both of these. Now, let me take you a little bit deeper into this uh, xCloud app a little bit. Up top, you got a menu bar, home, feedback, and that's your profile. Let's go into my profile. Really doesn't allow you to do very much. You can allow cellular data. This is a tablet, so I'm on Wi-Fi. But if it was a phone, you can just hit that, allow your cellular cellular data, and you can play on 4G. Uh, you got your appear offline and all that stuff where you can sign out. Feedback, that's nothing more than offering some feedback to uh, Microsoft to tell us what you think or tell them what you think. Then you got your selection of your 50 games right here. They do not let you buy anything or browse anywhere else. You just get to uh, do this whole selection. Oh man, they got Madden 20 on here. Sweet. I'm going to have to check that out. And then you got, uh, you can look at the list of games somewhere else. I'm not showing you every game. But in this menu right here, we have switch to console gaming. So you can toggle back and forth between your tablet and your console if you got one. In my case, I do not have a console, so this is irrelevant to me. But as far as the app goes, that's pretty much all you're gonna see there. Now, if I can take you into this Stadia app, I wonder if it'll go landscape. Let's just wait and see. No, no landscape on Stadia. All right, Tomb Raider was the last game I was playing last night and I finally beat it at like 65%. I didn't feel like looking at all the treasures and stuff, but it pops up right there. Here you got some messages and that's my buddy pass right there. I haven't selected anyone to give it to just yet. Here you got a little controller. You can turn on your location and stuff. Here's your little friend section right there. So I got some friends that are online right now and that'll show my request if I ever have any. And here is my personal profile so you can switch account. This is what I really like about Stadia that uh, xCloud does not come with. So in here, I can go to data usage and stuff like that. And I keep mine on the lowest quality, which is 720, which is actually pretty doggone good, by the way. That way, I'm only using up to four and a half gig an hour on this service. So I really do like that feature. And there's a couple of other things that you can do in here too, as far as like display and stuff, the high dynamic range. So they give you a little bit more flexibility inside of the app. Then uh, once you go into your store, you can look in here and you can find your games and stuff like that. Then you can scroll down, go to all games, and then you can see all your games there. They only have 20, like I said before, but more are coming in the future. I think they're gonna release them in like, you know, small batches or something like that. But you can see all the games you've claimed and stuff like that. Then you can go back home and you can also see all your games that you've purchased. So these are the games I purchased. Destiny 2 and Showdown actually came with the, uh, the bundle. I got them free. I actually paid 10 bucks for Tomb Raider and then like three days later, you know, they said it was free. So I lost 10 bucks there. I'm pretty sure I can get it back, but you know, it's just 10 bucks. No love lost there. Purchase Mortal Kombat and Farming Simulator was free. Metro was like 20 bucks. I decided to get that too. So this is where all your games are gonna live in Stadia. But I know the real question is which one is better or which one should I get? Should I get the Xbox X Cloud or should I do Google Stadia? Well, it kind of depends on what you want. Like this is, I don't think they're really meant to compete with each other just yet. Maybe in uh, mid 2020, yes, they can be a direct competition, but right now 
I don't even think these are in direct competition with each other simply because this is for mobile devices only right now. The only way you can play on xCloud is if you have a mobile phone or a tablet. Can't play it on a TV. Uh, you can, yes, you just saw that you can switch it over to an Xbox, but I ain't got no Xbox and you know, not everybody does. What if you got a PlayStation and you wanna play some Xbox games? You can't do that on your TV. You can only do that on xCloud. So that's where this one just kind of stops. It's limited right there at mobile devices. Whereas this is on limited number of mobile devices, i.e. Pixel devices uh, coming in 2020, we will get most of them. Uh, but now you can play this, as long as you got a Chromecast Ultra, you can play this on your big screen, you can play this in your bedroom TV, you can play on your PC. It's just more universal as far as playing on different devices and environments. As far as game selection, oh yeah, xCloud's got it. It's like more than double the games offered than what you get with Stadia. But here's the thing, man, the games are coming. Like, do you need to play all of them right now? <laughs> the games are coming. xCloud is gonna get more games, Stadia is gonna get more games, and yes, you get 50 free here. As far as the price if you're one of those people who already has an xbox you already got this controller so it is 100 free to you right now but trust me they're going to start taxing you at some point this is not going to be a free service <laughs> they're going to be charging you a minimum of like 7.99 to 10.99 a month um, for in my case, I had to go buy this controller. So if you're buying it right now, there's a good chance you're gonna have to pay anywhere between 40 and 60 bucks for a regular Xbox controller. If you wanna get one of the fancy ones, you might have to pay a little bit more money. But if you're already invested into the Xbox system, then you already have this. So you didn't have to pay anything to get into xCloud. That wasn't my case. In my case, my entry was 40 bucks and some change. Now with Stadia, because it's in the Founders Edition phase right now, they have not opened this up to the whole market just yet. Um, you had to pay, I think it was 130 bucks to get the Chromecast Ultra and the controller, which is basically retail for each. I think the, um, the Chromecast Ultra is like 70 or 80 bucks and then the controller is like 60 bucks or something like that, can't remember. But you had to pay for the hardware, which is reasonable because I had to pay for this, right? Now the service is $10 a month. And what do you get with that service? Well, from my understanding, you're gonna get maybe one game a month for free. Don't expect it to be all that great. But on top of that, if you take the paid option, the Stadia Pro option, you're gonna get some really heavy discounts on some games. And that's why I got some of my games so cheap for like 20 bucks when they're normally like 60 is because I had the Stadia Pro kind of coupon club member thing. So yeah, both of these services are gonna cost you money. Right now, they're just trying to get people in free. But don't get it twisted. Both of these are going to cost you money. In my case, I had to go pay for the controller and all the rest of the stuff is free right now as it stands. But I'm pretty sure in the future, $10 a month. Mark my words. As far as Stadia, I paid $130 for the hardware and it's $10 a month for the Pro. Or you could have the free part. Like I can cancel that anytime and all the games I purchased, they're still mine because I bought them and I can still play them even though I'm not a pro member anymore if I choose to cancel that membership. So as far as cost, I really don't feel like it's apples to apples. I mean, a lot of people already have a controller. I didn't, I still had to pay 69 bucks. A lot of people would say the xCloud is a no brainer because it's just far cheaper uh, as far as touching your pockets right away. And it is if you already got a controller. And even if you have to buy a controller, it's only 40 bucks and no membership or nothing like that right now. So yeah, this, this is probably the cheaper option right now, but in the long run, they're probably running right neck and neck with each other after it's all said and done. When we talk about streaming experience, I give them a tie. Uh, even though you can stream these games on 4G on the uh, xCloud, it's just a crappy experience in my uh, case usage. But on Wi-Fi, both of these perform the exact same way. As far as versatility, I'm gonna have to go with Google Stadia because I, I wanna play on the big screen. I don't wanna be on my phone all the time, you know, playing games. Even though I get more here, I get a lot more games here on the xCloud, I would rather play on a bigger screen while I'm at home. If I was out somewhere, yeah, I use my phone or something like that, but uh, that's not what I'm personally in this for. So I guess it really just boils down to personal preference. As far as my case right now, yes, both of them are necessary because if I wanna be at home playing on a bigger screen, I can go with the Google Stadia. When it's time for me to be a little bit mobile, or if I would just wanna play on my phone or tablet, you know, in a quiet corner somewhere, I could just play on this uh, xCloud. But in a few months, when Stadia opens up to most mobile phones, I don't know, man, this whole xCloud business might fade into the darkness because I'll be able to use this pretty much everywhere. So, ah, man, which one is better? 
I don't know. I say they're both equal at this point right here. They both have their pros and cons. One has a little bit more versatility. One has a lot more games. One's cheaper out of the pocket, but they're both going to be the same in a couple of months. But I think at the end of the day, as we move forward into 2020, I got a feeling Google Stadia is going to stand out above xCloud because of the versatility behind what's going on with uh, the Stadia stuff. So look, that's my opinion. I don't think you can really go wrong with either one of them. At this point, it's just personal preference and what's in your wallet. I know this video was kind of all over the place. It wasn't necessarily meant to be a precise video. I just wanted to kind of showcase a little bit of both of these platforms here and kind of give a you know brief comparison between the two because there's a lot of argument going on around the internet about these two platforms. Look, I am nowhere near an expert in anything with gaming attached to it. I'm just not, but what I do know is I'm having fun playing all these games right now, just wasting my life away. But if you had a good time checking out this video, man, make sure you follow me on social media. While you're down there, click on my other two channels and follow those two. Throw up those emoji hands and I'll see y'all at the next one. Hey, where you going? No, 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 no. Sit back down. We got to talk about this. You didn't have a good time? All right, then. Hit the subscribe button. There you go. Reach down there. There you go. And then hit the bell because you need to know when I'm opening up more new stuff. You got to come right back here and check this stuff out. Now, don't you feel like a better human being? All right. I knew you would. All right, man. I'll see you soon. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?